Hi, this is Starkey Sowers. Welcome again to another Plus Program training series. Today's topic, essential oils, and this is part two. A couple of things that we went over in part one was this. First of all, what are essential oils? Essential oils are the essences, so to speak, of a plant. Every single cell and every single part of the plant actually contains essential oils. So for instance, like the leaves, as well as the bark, as well as the roots, all those things have essential oils. And those are the active chemical constituents that are in plants. And so when we think about that, it's kind of like the vital vitality of the plant itself. And when we actually use them, there's all sorts of different types of healing qualities that it brings about. And that, of course, is what is known as aromatherapy. All right, so what's unique about um, essential oils is this. First of all, they are volatile. They are truly volatile. So you have to be careful on how you use them. Make sure that we're using them properly. And we're going to go over that in just about a minute. So just kind of keep that in note. Don't want to use those near an open flame or something of that nature. The other thing that we know is they're highly concentrated. Uh, one thing we see is we see when we look at lavender, it takes about 220 pounds to actually develop what we call about seven pounds of the active oil itself or the essential oil. So the other thing is they're unique. One thing we know about lavender, again, is if it grows in one particular area, it's a little bit different than another. Another great illustration is with eucalyptus. We look at eucalyptus, and eucalyptus is so commonly um, used for like uh, Vicks Vapor Rub and things of that nature. You might have used it uh, as you were a kid and great to uh, clear all sorts of mucus from the system. So we look at eucalyptus, and there's a couple different varieties. Eucalyptus globulus is the variety that's typically used uh, in things like Vicks Vapor Rub or Olbus, which is my favorite uh, vapor love, rub, as well as the essential oil that you can use. One thing that I, I like about the Olbus, it seems to have some other oils that make it a little bit more synergistic. But just think of that being a eucalyptus uh, globulus. So if we think of another eucalyptus plant, uh, Citradora, so when we look at the Citradora, one thing we know about the Citradora is it smells like lemongrass. And it's very similar to Citronella. So it actually is more of a bug repellent. So not only is it eucalyptus, but there are different varieties. And when there's different varieties, we have to be careful because there's all different types of chemical properties that take place. All right, so the other thing about um, uh, the uniqueness as well is you have to be cautious on how we use them. So what we're gonna look at now is how to use an essential oil. Uh, a couple different things. Number one, uh, essential oils are highly concentrated. So when they're highly concentrated, we have to be careful on how we use them. A lot of times we'll actually dilute them and we dilute them as with what we call carrier oils. One thing to remember about essential oils, they're not food oils. So they're not like olive oil or something of that nature. Those are what we call carrier oils. So when we use a carrier oil, especially if we're using essential oil topically, oftentimes we need to use those to prevent uh, maybe some chafing or some burning effects um, that might happen from using it in a very potent form. So by using it in that fashion, uh, very effective. Another way that we can use it as well too is we can use it through inhalation. Inhalation is considered probably the best way to use the essential oils. And obviously there's other applications as well, but those are the ones we'll kind of stick with and focus on today. All right, so what about some essential oils? Let's talk about maybe some popular essential oils. Um, let's looking at the list here, we see a couple uh, unique different ones. First on the list, we gotta go with lavender. We've talked about it throughout the whole day. A couple things about lavender is this. Number one, uh, very calming to the central nervous system, very effective uh, as far as calming the body down, calming the mind down. At the same time, it also has some analgesic principles and some antispasmodic. So it's gonna kind of calm down the muscle tissue as well as maybe help to alleviate pain. All right, next on the list is eucalyptus. And as we were saying, there's a couple different types of eucalyptus, but the typical principles of eucalyptus globus and eucalyptus radialis is number one, uh, it has an immune stimulatory, uh, stimulating effect to the body. So it kind of stimulates the immune system, which is a great thing for cold and flu season. You thought that that olbus was ultimately not really doing anything other than maybe just open up the airways, actually a little bit more than that. The other thing that we know is antiseptic or antibacterial and antifungal. So it's got some great principles there as well too when typically used topically. The other thing it is, it also has some anti-inflammatory effects as well. All right, frankincense. Frankincense, you might've heard that, frankincense and myrrh. One thing we know about frankincense, it's great for pain. They've been using it years for, topically for pain, but frankincense also has another great application. It also stimulates the collagen fibers and it rejuvenates the collagen fibers. Recently, probably the biggest revolution for frankincense has been used for anti-aging as well as for age spots on the skin. So it's been one that a lot of people have flocked to a lot recently, uh, making it probably one of the more popular ones. 
All right, next on the list, we see helichrysum, and helichrysum is what I call the arnica, so to speak, of the homeopathic world. When you think of homeopathy and you think of arnica, that's definitely what we call the golden child. When we look at homeopathy, everyone wants to talk about arnica and how effective it works. Well, helichrysum is that to the essential oil world. Helichrysum is great for pain and inflammation. A couple of things about helichrysum, it's very potent and it's very powerful and it's very strong in its odor. So typically, most individuals will dilute it with another type of oil just to avoid the strong smell. Peppermint or wintergreen or something of that nature seems to be the oil of choice. A lot of people really enjoy using that particular uh, combination to make a difference. All right, so tea tree oil. Tea tree oil, if you've gone into a health food store throughout the years, tea tree oil is definitely an oil of choice. Tea tree oil is antiseptic, antibacterial, antimicrobial. When used topically, it's definitely one of the oils that we typically will see all over the place. And so a lot of times you'll see it slip into acne type treatments. And so one of the things that we notice with when it comes to uh, tea tree oil is in all sorts of different things, when toothpaste and all that uh, particular types, there's all different varieties of tea tree oil, but ultimately, uh, typically the ones that are used are more on the medicinal line. All right, so we can't uh, go any further without talking a little about, about Lang Lang. And Lang Lang is what I call love, love potion number nine. It seems like a lot of the people that make perfumes are always using Lang Lang as a base. And the Lang Lang oil itself ultimately is the one that's so popular in use in so many different areas because it actually is the one that kind of calms the body and kind of brings out the emotions very effectively and very nicely. So a couple of things that, uh, to note about essential oils that I think that are very essential as well is when it comes to the oils themselves, as we've been talking about, they're very concentrated. So if you took rose oil, for instance, and, or lemon oil, for instance, the lemon peel itself, which has all sorts of different properties, such as antibacterial, my, antimicrobial, good for digestion, you're going to take that peel, and ultimately what it might have happened is somebody might have pray, sprayed an, an insecticide on top of it. So when you concentrate that oil down, you're going to get a portion of those insecticides. So a couple things when you're buying oils. Number one, you want to make sure that you're buying an organic oil whenever possible. The other thing that you might want to do is look for what we call French medical grade. Those are going to ensure that there's no toxins, no impurities whatsoever, and there's been no pesticides used on the products themselves. So when you get those oils, you know that when you use them internally, it's going to make a bit of a difference. You're not going to be carrying a lot of garbage with it that the body's got to detoxify. I think that's one of the most significant things to remember. It's a great takeaway to finalize this series to know that we definitely need to have what we call EcoCert or be in a position where they are organic. All right, so this should have laid a good foundation for you when it comes to essential oils and maybe get you a little bit of a foundation on getting out there and maybe trying them. And I hope that you enjoy this. Thank you very much for watching another PLUS program training series.